Welcome to Natural Born Talents. Today's subject is one that is very dear to me, martial arts. Now, since I was a young kid, I have been studying yoga and a variety of martial arts, as well as a variety of other spiritual practices that include uh, Zen meditation, creative visualization, and many, many others. And for me personally, there is no right or wrong martial art. There's no one better than the other. They all have different purposes and meanings. And that's actually true for spiritual practices as well. Now, every now and then I'll get some baby soul or some egotist who will come on my channel and tell me that these spiritual practices are created by the devil or something like that. The only way that could be true is that if the instructor of said spiritual practice is themselves a Satanist or the like. These spiritual practices were actually made by the deities along with humans and humanity. And in another video, I'll get into the detail on how the deities interact with humanity. It's very different from the angels and the ancestors who directly influenced humanity. Now, having said that, let's take a closer look at martial arts. And to do this, I have to break this up into three words I want to put out in front. The first word is self-defense. The second word is martial art. And the third word is budo. Of course, there are other names and things that you can attach to these practices, but I'm going to stick to these three. Self-defense means exactly what it says. You train to defend yourself from a variety of difficult situations that could endanger your life or others. Martial arts is really the practice of performance of such said discipline. I mean, you can't use martial arts in a war, in a battle. You can only use it either for performance or defending yourself, one or the other. They're ineffective. They're not practical. That doesn't mean that if you train in martial arts, you'll be useless in a war or a fight. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you can't go out in the middle of a battle and start using your kata, for example, as a way of fighting your opponent. More on that later. Now the word budo, or the way of the warrior, or the way of the samurai, is a spiritual path. It's a lifestyle. Much of its roots connected to Buddhism or the Tao. I mean, after practicing long enough, you start living your life differently. You start interacting with people differently. You see things differently. And this is what attracted to me to the martial arts more than anything else. And you may ask, well, what does that have to do with auras? Surprisingly, it has a lot to do with auras. If you're a real physical aura, say like the red or the orange, you might want to practice something like self-defense, not martial arts or budo. But if you're one of the more spiritual auras or the somewhere in between auras, you might want to pick up and learn about the culture and the deeper meaning of the spiritual side of martial arts or budo by practicing something closer to that. You'll get more out of it. An orange would do very well in the MMA, for example. But one of the more spiritual auras like a lavender, indigo, or crystal wouldn't do well at all in that. They get creamed. But on the other hand, if they wanted to learn the spiritual side of martial arts, the meditative side of it, the culture, the latter said auras would be far more suited for something like Budo or martial arts. And this is true for anything like yoga and the like. The problem I have is that when I see some guy from the Special Forces go on his YouTube channel and says that he's this Kung fu -y Eastern style martial arts and he's fighting in a ring with other people and then while he's showing his rather privileged life in California with his gardener Jose, 
rummaging around in the background of the video and he turns to the camera and says don't worry that's my gardener I'm not going to be ninja'd I'm beginning to wonder if this guy is trying to sell Eastern philosophy and spirituality and stuff to pay his bills or if he really believes in it or not. I don't question the individual's skill. I know he's probably one of the best self-defense instructors on the planet. He probably knows a far more than most people. But to try to make it look like it's connected to something like Kung Fu or traditional martial arts is a little bit misleading because anybody who knows traditional martial arts, the first thing is that under Buddhism and Tao, you don't collect a lot of material things in your life because everybody knows that the less material things you have in your life, the more you can focus on the spiritual side of yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a privileged life, you shouldn't have money. I'm saying you really should enjoy your life. Get what you want out of life. And I'm not going to attack anyone's dojo for doing this. If you like it, you like it. Go for it. Do it. But say what it is. Don't try to fake it. Because in reality, there's probably some guy called Jacob who lives down the road from this martial artist. And he's on his YouTube channel saying, I know God. Come pray with me and I'll teach you all these spiritual things. All you have to do is buy my Bible at a reduced price. Help me pay for my gardener too. And all the angels of heaven will come and protect you. Now a guy like this probably makes more than the self-defense instructor. And I'm not saying my instructor is any different. He's something like this. Hi, I'm Senbei Sensei. And I know a variety of martial arts that are anywhere from 400 to 1200 years old. Come train with me and help me preserve the traditional way. Never mind that most of what I'll teach you is not practical in mainstream society today because you can't carry a katana around in public. Now the martial arts that I train now in is in the last one. And though there are problems with it, I have learned so many new things in it, it's worth for me to stay in it. The other two examples have no meaning for me anymore because I'm too old to practice self-defense in a ring. I don't believe in it in any ways. If you're young, I would say to anyone, go for it, especially if you're an orange, red, yellow, green, tan, aura, and the like. But if you're not, and you're more on the spiritual side, then I would choose something like Aikido, Jujutsu, Yaijutsu, and the like. Which brings us to the other part of the video. There is no right or wrong martial arts. You choose a martial arts, and this is probably true for yoga, that suits your psyche, that suits your physical being, and in my case, that suits your aura. There is so much information and misinformation about martial arts out there that a lot of people may want to practice it but get turned off by it by it being too physical or like boxing in a ring or as one of my friends had said he preferred karate because he didn't feel like getting sweaty with another man on a mat on the ground which brings us to the next point things like kendo and judo and soon karate are now going to be sports they're no longer going to be Budo. Sure, part of it will still be martial arts, but it's not going to be traditional martial arts or the way of the warrior as it used to be. As karate becomes an Olympic sport, just like judo and maybe someday kendo, well, these are fantastic sports and I'm not knocking anybody who does this. If you enjoy competition, do it. But all real traditional martial arts was never about competing. It was about improving your skills. It was about defending yourself and others if you could. Winning and losing had little meaning. And in today's world, there are a lot of paid off judges, paid off participants. This is well known in the sumo world where somebody will throw a match because they were paid to do so. Where is the spiritual meaning in that? 
In fact, in the old days, losing against someone who was better than you was an honor. And it was an honor because you learned something. You could learn something by sparring with somebody who was better than you. And now in Okinawa, many of the older karate instructors cringe at the idea of karate becoming an Olympic sport. On one hand, they're very proud of karate and they're happy to see it become so prevalent throughout the world. But on the other hand, they all know they're going to lose the traditional side of it. So let's get back to the different styles. Is one better than the another? I find this particular concept in of itself kind of ridiculous. For example, Aikido was about avoidance. Aikido was about defending yourself and avoiding conflict or contact with another person as much as possible, about subduing them, about redirecting the energy from an attack if necessary. Now if you put somebody who practices Aikido in a ring with another person who practices full contact karate for example, you have immediately taken away the spirit of what Aikido was meant to be. It was never meant to be a competitive sport in a ring with someone else who knows another martial arts style. Aikido takes a long time to master and many hours of practice to get to the level where you can use it effectively against, say, a person wielding a knife. That would take much less time with somebody who practices karate, for example. But karate, you punch and cause damage to another person, which goes against the concept of Aikido in the first place. One Aikido practitioner looked at me and said, I don't think I could use Aikido in a fight in a bar. And I looked at him and I said, well, why would you go to the bar in the first place? Are you looking for fights? Well, if that's the case, I would recommend Thai kickboxing. I think you get the point. The point is, is not for me to say what is right or what is wrong about martial arts or what you should do with it. My point is, is that a lot of these people who claim that they know one thing or another about martial arts don't tell the whole story. They try to pull you into their dojo and there's always something to learn in someone's dojo somewhere. But try to go to a dojo that is upfront about exactly what they teach and not try to BS you into something. I mean, I laugh at myself now. I'm learning martial arts that really doesn't have any practical meaning. I mean, I can't go around swinging a katana at people. But at my age in psyche, I don't intend in getting in the ring with somebody twice my size who knows full contact karate. So having said all this, I'd like to say in conclusion something that I've learned over and over again. It really doesn't matter what spiritual practice you do, whether martial arts, yoga, prayer, meditation, all of those things that I've practiced, they're all good. But be careful on the leaders. Be careful on who's running it. Take a look at your psyche. Are you a spiritual person? Are you a physical person or somewhere in between? If you're one of the physical people who is young, I would definitely re recommend something like full contact karate. It will improve your other sports. But if you're not, and you're not such a physical person and you're more spiritual, well, then definitely something like Aikido, Jujutsu, Yaijutsu, Naginata, Tai Chi, one of the more passive styles of Kung Fu, or something like that. Again, it's what do you want to get out of it that really counts which is true of any spiritual practice. So that's all I have for this video. I hope to see you in the next. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And thanks again for watching. The Japanese proverbs you see throughout these videos can be purchased as greeting cards to help support this channel. The link is in the description below. And no, I don't have a gardener.
しいじいちゃんじゃあ、あのゲイポーの大会怪しそう行くぞ